Hi class, it's Dr. Linder. Uh, what I'd like to do in this short video is just go over this other model for the heart. Um, it's the white model, right? We have a brown model for lab and we have a white model. And there's just a few items on here that I'd like for you to focus on. Um, one of the things that I do like about this model is like the arrows. You see the red arrows and blue arrows. It kind of shows you the direction of oxygenated versus deoxygenated blood, right? So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, all right, let's take a look at some key structures here. Let's find a good place to start. How about this right here, the arch of the aorta or the aortic arch? So once you see the arch of the aorta, we know that there's three blood vessels right, I call them three valves of the trumpet, one, two, three. That first one is called the brachiocephalic trunk, and that's on the right side. Um, that is an artery. We don't have to call it the right brachiocephalic trunk because there is no left brachiocephalic trunk, okay? On the venous side, though, there is a left and right brachiocephalic vein, but on the arterial side, uh, there's only a brachiocephalic trunk and that's on the right-hand side. Okay, the second one, now there's two on the left-hand side. When I say left, um, I'm not talking about our reading left, I'm talking about the heart's left side or the individual's left side. And that would be the left common carotid. And then off to the side of that, we then have the left subclavian artery. All right, so the left common carotid, that's gonna go up and anything that has the word common, it's safe to assume that it will divide into an internal and external something. Anytime you hear the word common in the word. So if it's a common carotid, it will divide into an internal and external carotid artery. Now on the left-hand side, there's a subclavian. So going down the left arm, right, it'll be subclavian. Then it becomes the, the axillary. Then it becomes the brachial. Then it becomes the radial and the ulnar artery. And then you have a superficial and deep palmar arch with digital arteries. On the right-hand side of the body, we have this uh, brachiocephalic trunk. Now on the left side, you have two separate arteries, one going up the common carotid, which divides into an internal and external carotid. And then you have one going down the arm, the subclavian. But on the right-hand side, it's the brachiocephalic. When you look at the word brachio, that means arm, cephalic going up cephaladly, right? Towards the head. So the break, from the brachiocephalic, we can have the right common carotid artery that comes off of that and the right subclavian artery that comes off of that. That's different. That's different than the left-hand side where there's a left subclavian and a left common carotid that come right off the arch of the aorta. On the right side, it's brachiocephalic. And from that come those two branches, the right common carotid and right subclavian, okay? All right, we have the arch of the aorta, and from the arch of the aorta, there is a right coronary artery and a left coronary artery. If the uh, pulmonary trunk right here was removed, you'd be able to see the artery originating right off the arch of the aorta. Okay, and here's the pulmonary trunk that will eventually lead into the right and left pulmonary arteries. Okay, now we look at this one. Let's see if we have anything different. Now we're looking at the venous side. There are veins on this one, right? This picture was all arterial. This side is venous. So we're trying to get everything to flow into that superior vena cava so that the deoxygenated blood can make it here into the right atrium. So we have the left 
brachiocephalic vein, and we have the right brachiocephalic vein, right? That's just proximal, or I should say just distal, right? Uh, to the superior vena cava, right? Blood is coming and follow the blue arrows. We're coming this way. Okay, how do we get blood from the head up here down? So this is where the left internal jugular vein and the right internal jugular vein come in. And how do we get the blood from the digits all the way up from both hands? Well, that's gonna be eventually the right subclavian and the left subclavian. So if we look at the left-hand side, since it's easier to see, uh, if this were to extend out further, we'd be able to see the left axillary leading into the left subclavian, leading into the left brachiocephalic vein, leading into the superior vena cava, leading into the right atrium. From the head, right, from the brain, from all of the sagittal sinus and the transverse sinus and the sigmoid sinus, right? You're gonna have uh, all that deoxygenated blood dumping in to the left and the right internal jugulars and they're gonna find their way in to the uh, brachiocephalic vein on the left and on the right, okay? Uh, so this one here is the left internal and lateral to it or further external is the left external jugular vein. Okay. And then what we're seeing here between the aortic arch and the pulmonary trunk is the fetal rem remnant referred to as the ligamentum arteriosum. Okay. All right, let's see from, let me see if there's anything I'd like for you to know here. What we're doing is we're taking the heart and we're rotating it. So what we can see here, this looks like the uh, trachea and the esophagus. So this is posterior and everything up here is anterior. So we're looking at, even though this is a lateral view of the heart, we're looking at the right side of the heart, the individual's right side. So here, here, we could see the right subclavian artery, and we can see the right subclavian vein. Uh, right here is the superior vena cava. And here is the right pulmonary artery and the right pulmonary veins. Remember the Arteries here are uh, blue because it's deoxygenated and the veins are red because this is bringing oxygenated blood back into the right atrium, okay? So this is the right pulmonary artery, right pulmonary veins. From the bottom is the inferior vena cava. That's bringing blood you know, from the lower extremity, from the abdominal area, uh, right up into the right atrium, as is the superior vena cava, bringing blood that's deoxygenated into the right atrium. Okay, so uh, that's all I'd like for you to be familiar with there. Um, let's take a look here and see what I'd like for you to know. Okay, so now here we're looking at the posterior part of the heart we can see the trachea here. Here's the trachea. We can see the bifurcation. This is the right primary bronchus. Um, let's see what else I want you to know. Let's say here is the arch of the aorta right here. And as we go down, it starts to descend so they call it the descending aorta and it starts to go through the thoracic region. So it's either the thoracic aorta or descending aorta. 
And let's see what else I'd like for you to know here. From that view, that would be, that would be it. Okay, let's see from here. Okay, so now we're looking more at the left hand side. So we can see the left pulmonary artery. Again, it's blue. We can see the left pulmonary veins, they're red. And here's the great cardiac vein. That great cardiac vein, you could see from the anterior wrapping around the lateral around to the posterior that leads into the coronary sinus. And the coronary sinus will then enter into the uh, right atrium, okay? And from this view here, we can see the posterior cardiac vein. So here's the posterior. We can't see the middle or the small cardiac vein from this side. We'd have to rotate it a little bit more. So we just can't see it from here. Um, I think that's all. Um, it's going to the clavicle. So this is the left subclavian artery. And here's the left subclavial vein. And then right here is the arch of the aorta, right? But you can't see too much else from it because again, we're looking at it kind of like posterior. We can see a little bit from the side view, right? But that's just a little bit of orientation there. Now we're looking at it from the posterior again, but now we can see inferiorly because we can see the inferior vena cava right here. And now from this view, right? Let's say right here is the cardiac vein, the great cardiac vein right here. Then it leads into the coronary sinus right here. And then you'll see a vein that's pretty much close to alignment to that inferior vena cava. But if you go inferior to it, it's the middle, it's the middle cardiac vein. So you got the middle cardiac vein, you got the coronary sinus, and here is the small the small cardiac vein, okay? So in this one here, here is the great cardiac vein leading into the coronary sinus and we could see the posterior cardiac vein. If we rotate it more, here's the coronary sinus that um, this posterior cardiac vein that we see here would now be off to the side and we can't see it. But here is the middle and the small cardiac vein. And following the middle cardiac vein is that posterior interventricular artery, the posterior interventricular artery. Remember on the front side, there's an anterior interventricular artery. Let's see if we can, where if we can find that here for you. Doesn't show it too well here. It's not going down. Uh, inferior enough. All right, let's see if there's anything else. And that would be it. Okay, so that's a little bit on the white heart. We've done another video on the brown heart. Between the both of them, you'll have a pretty good understanding of the, the basic anatomy of the heart.